It is currently the morning of the 1st of December 2019 in the Western Pacific and Typhoon Kamori, not much has changed with this storm system. It is slowly continuing to dry to intensify out here just towards the east of the Philippines. Still plenty of outflow aloft towards the north here. We are still continuing to move over some rather warm sea surface temperatures. So as far as further intensification, I do continue to expect it. Nothing has changed though. Uh, from 24 hours ago as far as the intensity according to the Japan Meteorology Agency winds of 80 gusting up to 115 knots pressure currently at 955 hectopascals this has changed though it has picked up its westward movement up to 20 kilometers per hour uh, an hour which we did expect a increase in forward speed though once that northeast monsoon started to interact with it a little bit more. One thing I do want to note though is that we are beginning to see a better organization as far as that cyclonic nature of this storm system wrapping around the center here. You can see that on IR imagery. It's going from one big blob located in the southeastern side of it to something a, a bit more looks like a typhoon but still isn't very pretty at all but if we look through those higher cloud tops uh, down to the lower level clouds we can see that an eye is developing now 24 hours ago it was a little bit less organized but it does look like an inner eye wall trying its hardest here to get its act together and I do highly anticipate that inner eye wall to get its act together prior to landfall here in the Bacall region as we go ahead into Monday afternoon. Now, Monday afternoon and evening is landfall. Monday morning, we're going to start to see that interaction already, and I'll get to that in a second. First, I do want to note, this is the Dvorak analysis over the past several days here, and you can see a general increase in the storm. This is where it just kind of petered out and just lingered stationary, but now that it's moving west again, we're starting to see it re-intensify, and I would expect this to continue to gain strength as it does move in that westward projection. So here's the latest track from Pagasa. And I'm showing you Pagasa because this is now inside this magical area that Pagasa lays out called the Philippine Area of Responsibility for those of you who are not from this area. The storm, they also name it their own name. Don't get me started, but it's called Tesoy. Now, just prior to landfall, they expect this to come on shore right around about 2 a.m. Now, I would, I'm saying Monday afternoon and not overnight because that outer eye wall is likely going to already start to interact with the coast by the time we get into Monday afternoon into the evening. And with this increase in forward speed, I think it might be a little bit faster than what the goss is saying. But this is the local official warning passing just south of Manila as we go ahead overnight from Tuesday into Wednesday as well. Likely as about a Category 1, maybe Category 2 on the Saffron Simpson scale as it does do that. All right, so here's the latest warnings from Pagasa. They have signal force warning, signal force one. It goes all the way up to five. I would not be surprised if we get into that three to four level and maybe not five. Five is reserved to like, whoa, type storms, but hey, uh, I, I wouldn't count it out. Signal Force 1, though, for all of these locations. You can just see it on the map here. Do check out their Facebook page. They're updating this every about three hours. So if you're watching this three hours after from my uploading, um, probably outdated. Landfall likely Monday, though, afternoon into the evening in the Cal region. Uh, dangerous storm surge possible on the northern side of this storm, even though it is not your classic buzzsaw ship, it still is going to bring in that storm surge threat as all of our friends just south of there in Samar and Leyte know um, storm surge can be very, very dangerous and uh, it does look like it's going to track south of Manila over Mindoro as we go ahead into Monday or excuse me, into Tuesday. So here's a look at the track from the JTWC. Let's zoom in here though. And this is where my concern really does lie. Uh, Laguna, Laguna, I'm going to get this right, Lacanoy Bay, uh, just on the northern side of that, we're going to get some of that flow coming in. Of course, the storm's going to wrap around as this comes through, and this is one of my 
concerns at San Miguel Bay, uh, you're going to get some of that storm surge getting bundled into there, and there is a possibility of some decent flooding out there as well. Good news, it is moving north of Legaspi, one of the bigger metro areas here, but you're still going to be impacted by it as it is cruise on by. Let's take actually a different look here at this map and get you an idea of where we're talking about here. So you have a pretty famous volcano right in here, by the way. That's going to be staying north of that. Moving off there towards the west, uh, a lot of these bays and inlets on the northern side of that center of circulation, that's where the bigger issue, I think, lies as far as storm surge is concerned. But basically, this entire swath of cities and towns out here, which pretty heavily populated region, is going to be impacted by, at the very least, typhoon strength winds, so non-reinforced structures, definitely going to be looking at that threat uh, uh, getting some significant damage here as it does move off there towards the west. Uh, if you see your name or your town anywhere on here, you're probably going to have some big impacts. You notice how I'm kind of leaning towards the north side of that track, though? The north side is definitely going to be the area that has the bigger impact. Tagaytay, I know this is a big volcanic crater, but Tagaytay definitely going to be looking at an impact here. Not as far as flooding, but the winds that scream across uh, this valley and kind of get pushed up the hill there as well. I actually visited the radar station way up here, I believe a few years back so a pretty elevated area right in there and eventually like i said this is going to move off there towards the west uh the track likely going to be moving just off the southwestern coast of Luzon or northern Mindoro there but either way regardless this is going to put the ncr the metro manila area kind of the right front of that and you're probably soon be looking at the very least tropical storm strength winds but i would not be surprised you get typhoon strength winds in manila as well uh this is just look at the windy app just one kind of key frame what i'm talking about there with that right front quadrant um just one more way of looking at it and what we're talking about here is those winds they wrap around they push on shore but also you have to take into account the forward motion of the storm which acts kind of like a snow plow or just any type of plow i suppose and it pushes that water along with it and that's when we start to see that threat of surge um damaging winds but also flooding is going to be an issue out here and this is one I, when i asked yesterday about uh if people what kind of graphic they wanted a lot of people asked about the total amount of rainfall and i think this is on the low end of the scale actually some of these areas out here could see as much as 400 to 500 millimeters especially in here the call region of uh, basically southwestern Luzon overall to put that in perspective that is upwards of about two feet of rain I mean that's flooding and landslide to the max and that's why already the signal force warnings have been issued for this area so uh, that's going to be a major issue as well check out westernpacificweather.com I'll post this same map there so you can kind of get an idea this is by the way the GFS forecast it's not an official rainfall forecast but uh, at this point this model is going to be pretty accurate uh, what you can anticipate with it Anyways, there's just one more look at the Western Pacific Satellite. Yet again, like I said, big outflow for, to the north for this to continue to breathe. We have warm sea surface temperatures, and it is trying to get wrapped up there. I do not, not expect this to become a ty super typhoon. I want, I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, that's off the table, but still a dangerous storm system. Yes, especially in this part of the Philippines. Uh, once you start getting a little bit further south, I, I, from my total experience with these storms the further south you go the more prone you are to a very damaging storm system and not to mention this brings me back uh, reminiscent of glenda and reming very very similar track out here um yeah so that that definitely plays a role if you take a look at history it's just a very prone area for some damage also looking back towards the east you have 94 Five, I believe. No, no, this is 96 because this was 95. Uh, anyways, another low behind this, keeping an eye on it, but I'm not, I'm not all too worried about it at this time. Anyways, that's all my rambling. There's your tropical outlook for today. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please post them down in the comment box below. Also, if you have um, photos or videos that you would like to share, because I can put those in this, this video update for the next one and I can share your reports and you kind of get a little communication community thing going that makes me happy as well anyways see you guys have a fantastic day and um, 
yeah, uh, of course, as always, stay safe out there.